It's a brisk night in the Midwest, but we've got football at Paycor Stadium in the Queen City of Cincinnati, Ohio. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. Well, the Bengals now set for their first possession and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. And you and I both know that any win is a good win and that's what they did last week but there's also plenty for him to work on in his game wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns an and interception. Yeah you know he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio but first and foremost they did win the game. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Now it's Burrow. Hits his target. That's Charlie Jones. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. third down to mix it on the check down and he'll lose yardage brought down at the 32 it'll be a loss of two maybe three on the play and that's going to make it fourth down I believe I could see what they were trying to do there but unfortunately the back ran out of room too close to the sideline and for defenders we're often taught 11 on the field those sidelines can become the 12th defender it worked to the defense's advantage on that play this is taken at the 23. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And they will take over first and 10. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. And he's certainly putting together an MVP-type season, leading the league in both passing yards and touchdown passes. There have not been too many defenses that have been able to stop him or even slow him down. So he's got a sight set on another big game right here. They juked him, and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. A lot of running backs, a little bit of a disadvantage when you start talking MVP. Might not be the case this year. You think he's got a shot, don't you? I do. I think he's got more than a shot. But what he's going to need here down the stretch this late in the season, he needs that big closing game, that game that we're all going to reflect on and go, oh, my goodness, did he put up a number? Let's say 200 plus. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 right at the 40. They'll set up to throw. That'll be caught over the middle by Moss. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. The numbers on Moss from last week's game. Five catches, 94 yards, and a score. It certainly seems like he gets a touchdown each week, doesn't it? Here we are in the final month of the season. He is the NFL leader in touchdown catches. He has been an absolute machine. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. When you get a look at their key inactives for this week's game, and, and Charles, clearly you don't want to have any of these guys unavailable, especially when you're where they're at fighting for a playoff spot. I agree because the postseason is on the line. So you've got to overcome the injuries and find a way to win. And the only way to do that, the guys available have to step up. What's that mantra in the NFL? Next man up. This is their opportunity.
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Well, this offense, Charles, we talked about how well they played all season. Sitting now at 13-0 and at a finish line for a perfect regular season. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hill. And the Bengals are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. So the interception there, and Charles, I'd imagine that's something you can maybe live with in December, but not come January. And I love how you make the distinction there. You're talking about regular season versus the postseason, the playoffs. Because these guys, they've already clinched a playoff spot, but they know, looking ahead, when they get into the postseason, they've got to take better care of the football because turnovers in that situation, they really become magnified. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. They are back over the 500 mark for the season. Got there with a win a week ago, their second straight victory. Well, they've definitely gotten better as this season has gone along. And from what I can tell, they know their roles. Everyone understands how they fit offensively, defensively. And this team now has an identity, and they're playing to it and playing well. Back to Mixon on second down. And he can muster only a couple here to the 24. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. They played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game, stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire time, made it difficult for them to step up and find receivers down for And that's what they told us this week, that pressure on the QB is key. A Bengal first down with a 16-yard pickup there. Here's Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. And after the nice stiff arm, the next wave swarms in quickly for the stop. From the 44-yard line, here's second and five. At the 44-yard line. Now Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to midfield. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. From midfield now, Burrow. His throw incomplete. He's second in the NFL in interceptions, and you understand why. He plays the game with great intelligence, understands positioning, and has a great ability to break on the football when it's in the air. So fun to watch his closing speed and another example of it on that play. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 36. to throw again. He gets this one to Boyd. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. A game of five brings up second and five at the 31-yard line. Burrow will throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Burrow looking to pass. They'll set up the screen here to Mixon. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Yeah, and on third down, you know those pass rushers, they're in the starter's block. They're just waiting for the pistol to fire. You can almost hear the defensive coaches on the sideline pre-snap. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Really good job there of identifying it and making the play force work down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. A three-yard pickup brings up seven and seven at the 30-yard line. He'll look to throw. Throw left side complete to Moss. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. They need two. Here's third down. They're going to look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's 
complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Solid catch there for a man who's been so brilliant this year. Worth pointing out, as we were talking about earlier, there has never in the 60-year history of the award been a pass catcher, tight end or wide receiver, that has taken home the MVP trophy. And the best receivers I've talked with, they know that stat, and it drives them crazy because they understand that without a quarterback, they don't make the plays that they make. They also don't feel like they get enough credit for bailing out some of the throws the quarterbacks make. Yeah. Touchdown, Vikings! A great effort there. His 14th touchdown now on the year. And the Vikings will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. Well, Charles, kind of the future of this franchise on display right there. You had a rookie throwing it, a rookie catching it, and taking it into the end zone. Could you imagine if we were in the owner's box right now and we could look at the front office and see the grins on their faces to see the present making plays and knowing what the future will bring with these youngsters going out and making big-time moments happen for this team. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this taken in at the goal line. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. This defense for the Vikings, they were very good a week ago in that win over Minnesota. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. Give him six yards in the first down. First and ten. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. So, Charles, this defense in for a tough matchup. What do you think the game plan is here tonight? Well, I think the game plan is the same as most, which is, hey, pass rushers, do your job. Coverage guys, do your job. And the linebackers are going to be a mix. Sometimes they'll drop in coverage. Sometimes they'll pressure the quarterback. But all in all, you never want to let that quarterback get a string of completions going because if so, they're hard to deal with, and it makes for a long evening. Second and 10 now, Burrow working the middle here. That's complete to sample the tight end. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. To the air again, Burrow. And he gets this in the hands of Mixon. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. 
After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. As they've got it as we resume action. Burrow's throw her into the hands of Boyd. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the foul. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker. And you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? The ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. They'll give it to Mixon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. This is the most important of them all, third and goal. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now, what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. McPherson's kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bring it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there with touchdown number 27. That ties Priest Holmes for the third most in a single year. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen. And it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that will bring up second down. They go play action with Burrow. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Ten yards there at a Bengal first. And the Bengals first down. First and ten at the 40-yard line. Play action. It's Burrow. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Open man is Chase complete. It'll be a gain of five. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Brings up third and 11. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. Here's Brad Robbins now. 
46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Pulled in at the 24. A nice work on the return as he gets about 15 yards back. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Moss. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 11 yards for number 11. On first down, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. His second catch, this one not quite as dynamic as his first, and it's second down. Now they'll run it on the toss. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Here comes third down at seven. They'll set up a throw. And he is caught. He's got the first down and more. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Vikings add six to their lead. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because... They feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future as well, and by association, a bright future for the franchise too. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And this, let's face it, an important drive if they're going to get back into this ballgame. Think about going into the locker room down 21 to 10 as opposed to 21 to 3. 21 to 10, a little more optimism, a little more bounce around the locker room, a little more discussion about how they're going to finish this thing off. 21 to 3. I think discouragement clouds that locker room. Yeah, and I think a touchdown much bigger than a field goal on this drive just to get into the end zone and get that momentum. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Second down and eight. A gain of two brings up second and eight. A toss left. Mixon. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now to this point. The offense on third down tonight, three for seven so far in this game. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, everything right now that they touch on this side of the football, it seems to turn to gold. They've scored on three straight possessions. That lead continues to grow. And, I mean, if they can get points here, Charles, might almost... Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. It's D.J. Turner who's got it. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Well, he had to wait until December, but congrats to the rookie, his first INT. Yeah, he's been a reliable contributor for this defense throughout the season. Definitely got a bright future and has gotten even brighter after making that play. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they'll start with great field position, trying to get back into this one. It's first and 10 here. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. That's complete to the tight end sample. 
And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. You know, when this offense gets down here near the end zone, they're going to turn to their bell cow, and this guy's been a touchdown machine all year. Excellent job stopping him there on first down. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Third and goal, Burrow. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. And the Vikings are going to get the football here as he gets this up past the 20-yard line. Now the defense, Charles, they bit a little bit, but they did not break. And then on third and goal there, the huge interception. Think of the momentum they're carrying with them right now, Brandon, because in their mind, whether they want to admit it or not, they were conceding three points. Their goal was to keep them out of the end zone, not give up a touchdown. Instead, they give up nothing. What a big-time play and a big-time stop by them. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Trey Hendrickson able to record his fifth sack of the season. Traditionally, as a defense, your number one job, stop the run. But in today's football, it's impacting the opposing quarterback. Make him uncomfortable. And so far... Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. So just three yards on the completion there. And they're gonna face an uphill battle here on third and long. Back to throw here. That's gonna be caught by Moss. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for fourth. There's another example what defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They give up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Burrow will throw. This is caught. It's Boyd. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll check in with Jonathan Coachman from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Here's Burrow. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Week after week, we're seeing plays like this from him. And I think he's in line. We've discussed it before for NFL Defensive Player of the Year. And a big reason why, I think, is because of his ball skills. And that's something that, for guys of his position, They've talked about it for years. They've done the drills, but they've really increased it in recent seasons because of the offense have gotten so good. He knows how to take the ball away. That is huge for a defender. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. 
And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. They'll look to throw again. And he's going to go down, sacked right around the 17. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. They'll look to throw. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. And his kick is indeed good. And the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's 24-3. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. Now the Bengal offense going to see the ball one more time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Again, it's Burrow on second and 10. He completes it to Boyd. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. From the gun on third down is Burrow. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. He may go. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, you start to feel sorry now for the young man throwing the football. This is really turning into a disaster. Listen, it's baptism. All right? This is almost a rite of passage. This young in the league, go back and find a Hall of Fame quarterback and check their records for their first two years, especially if they started the bulk of the games. I bet you'll find double-digit interceptions on just about every one of them. They have to learn as they go along. Point after, right down the middle. And a route is on here in this first half. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. 
Some good looking matchups on your screen there. One of the best? Yeah, I'll say it. It's in Cleveland. A big test there for the Browns as they get set to play host to the Chicago Bears. The four o'clock games have some intrigue as well, especially up in Buffalo, where it'll be the Bills taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Finally, Monday Night Football, two of the most successful franchises of this new millennium. Eight Super Bowls between them, the Chiefs and Patriots from Foxborough. The highlights from the first half, all one-sided. This one got out of hand early, and now you have to wonder how these teams will approach this second half, because this one's already close to being in the bag if it's not already. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Vikings offense making their way back out. Now let's give you a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it. It's team talking about it to each other, supporting each other, carrying each other along, because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title's clinched, shouldn't take the foot off the gap. No, not at all. Play it all the way through, and I think we've seen that in recent years in the NFL. The teams that play and play to win each and every game, they're the ones to deal with in the playoffs. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Five yards on the play. It's third down. Looking to throw. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. He's able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, he'll hand this off. Well, he gave one defender the slip, but others waiting in the wings and dropping him behind the line. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. The throw over the middle, taken in. So five yards here, five on the play. And now third down and six to go. They're going to look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Moss. They had a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. And that's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. I bet they thought they'd pick that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here and maybe want to go pick it up. <laughs> the Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Oh, yeah. 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Two yards to go, second down. Brings up second and two. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Rookie to rookie on the hookup there, and it's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Back to throw again. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Five yards. Now it's third and five. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. They team up there to pick up the first. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. They'll look to throw here. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 35. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Second and two. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. So first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Throw right side, going to be complete to Moss. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the ten to the seven. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. He'll look to throw. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And the Bengals are going to have the football at their own one-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ball game. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early learned from them and became great later who would that be that'd be one peyton manning through 28 his rookie year that's the nfl record how things turn out for him i think okay he's a guy in all the commercials now right <laughs> yeah i think yeah. he's doing okay they'll try to get the run game going this is Mixon, and boy showing how tough he can be to bring down just fighting his way forward to pick up seven yards Here's second and three. Brings up second and three at the eight Now whistles and a flag. And I believe a bangle got going a little early there. Orlando Brown, the former Raven, the guilty party. Back to Mixon on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. It's third and nine. Once again, they run with Mixon. 
And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. 73 yards rushing here for Mixon. He's got a first down. First down. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Now Joe Mixon. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big game, or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. He's got his man, that sample to tight end. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Now a run up the middle with Drake. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11 at the 42-yard line. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Mixon. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Burrow looking to pass. He's got room at the 30, and he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We're off to the fourth quarter here in week 15. Happy holidays to all. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And he will find his man Chase complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Blitz coming and down he goes. Now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. On second down, Burrow. Over the middle, complete. It's Jones. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Quick slam cut by Chase. Touchdown, Bengals! Jamar Chase from six yards away. And the Bengals go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. That often runs you into a penalty. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Second and five. Brings up second and five at the 16. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. 
Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. This is second and eight. It's second and eight. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down tonight, they've been really good, converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and eight. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. That'll be good for six. Yardage there there. right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20 yard line. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. Their mini two-game win streak appears it might be going by the wayside unless they can pull a rabbit out of their hat. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Called at a very strong gain of 24. Here's Burrow. And it's a fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. You got to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. And now out comes Minnesota. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, Vikings! A great effort there with now 15 rushing touchdowns on the year. And the Vikings add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Uh, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back to the early drives, you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. The Bengals getting set to go. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mental. And always shut. And now the ball's out. sit here on the fourth it doesn't matter the coach on the sideline still scratching his head yeah not only scratching his head but probably writing a note or two about we're going to address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far doesn't matter at this point but being sloppy throughout the game not going to help them improve good starting field position for the vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 46 they'll start this drive out on the ground 
And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big pickup of 38. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. A great play there. His third touchdown of the game, number 16 on the season. And the Vikings are closing in on a 14-0 record as they extend their lead. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter. And the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Well, he leads the NFL in interceptions and nearly added to that total. Got his hand on it, couldn't quite corral it. It's been a Pro Bowl-type season for him, and the term ball hawk really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that one a lot because teams want to avoid that type of a player, but sometimes you just can't. He just knows where the ball is. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. So a risky, risky move that does not pay off. And Charles, you take it from the defensive perspective, they had to be a little offended there that they even tried to go for it back inside their own 20. Highly offended. And they took the ball away and gave it to their offense in a great situation. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked up by Mike Hill. And the Bengals are going to get the football here as he gets this up past the 20-yard line. Boy, you just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the years. There certainly is, and probably way too much, because now he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game, go to the press conference, meet it head on, and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today, and you'll be ready for the next game. And if he can do that as a rookie, that's a great sign of maturity. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. Throw left side complete to Chase. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Burrow throw. And he'll go right back to Chase. That's caught again. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine. Now it's Burrow. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, what has been a fantastic game for this defense has been rough for this offense, and certainly a signal caller, Charles, that's thrown all these interceptions. Another one there, and this one taken all the way back for the score. Partner hoping they're holding a nice little spot in the postgame highlights to show this rip of interceptions and great plays this group has made. They've been on it from snap one. Extra point splits the uprights, and this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 15. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 18-yard line. Now Burrow. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. Short completion, just four yards. And now it's third and three. Brings up third and three. Now it's Burrow. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. But we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that. And it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass is almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. And I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. At the 31-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. Down the right sideline. Touchdown! A big play there. 69 yards. And the Vikings extend their fourth quarter lead, and they are closing in now on a 14-win campaign. Solid response that time by a young quarterback. Last drive interception, this drive the touchdown pass. I like how you described it solid because you don't get extra kudos for bouncing back if you're going to be a big time quarterback. You're supposed to do that. But at the same time, when you're a rookie, that's not guaranteed, is it? Sometimes they hang their heads and they go in the tank a little bit. Not in this case, bounce back, took his team downfield and throw a touchdown pass. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. They will throw on first down with Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. Calling a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 47 yard line. He'll drop to throw. Got a man open. It's Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll be taken down at the 46. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And oh my goodness, here's a fifth interception. He's still on his feet. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, this one was already ugly, and now it's just kind of becoming a feast on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, partner, this is a unit that knows they've got this game in the bag with this huge lead. 
And it's going to drive their coaches crazy because they're telling them, play it straight, do all the right things. But these guys are going to be freewheeling now. All of them are going to take chances. And that one pays off with an INT and a return for six. Extra point right down the middle. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded right at the goal line. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. From the 23, this is second and three. Burrow looking to pass. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Working the middle here, that's complete to sample the tight end. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And he's got a Bengals first down as the tackle made at about the 38. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. First down, here's Burrow. He completes it to Jones. Now second and three. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Burrow on third down. No, oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far. Nothing going right offensively. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 13 yards. Well, fans usually love to see scoring, and there was no shortage of it today. What a dominant showing from an offense that was truly playing at an elite level in this contest. Partner, this game was over a long time ago, and you noticed? They did not want to slow down anything. Absolutely a dream scenario for everyone on that offense, and they took advantage of every second. Guaranteed popcorn for everyone in their film session. So for Minnesota, they move ever closer to the perfect regular season as they run things to 14-0, and they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, their playoff hopes take a hit as they drop to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they'll be on the road next week as they travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.